Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is National Master Ralph Tan, and welcome to Beginner's Breakdown. Today, we're going to dive into the concept of drawing combinations. So to illustrate, let's take a look at this position between Green versus Iken in 1966. So first things first, what is a draw? So a draw is when neither player wins or lose. So both players get a half a point and the game is declared as a draw. So there are several types of ways that a draw could be achieved. First being stalemate, where one player cannot move any of their pieces and it is currently their turn, so stalemate can be claimed. The second way is insufficient material. So if there's not enough material on the board, so for example, if it's just the two lone kings, checkmate is not possible. And in addition, there's cases where there could be a king versus bishop and versus a king, and that's not enough material to checkmate. There's also by agreement, one player could offer another player a draw, and they could accept it. Another way is threefold repetition or perpetual check. So if you achieve the same position three times, then a draw can be claimed. In addition, there is also the 50 move rule. So if the game continues on for 50 moves without a single capture or pawn move, then a draw can be declared. So let's dive into this position here. So the idea that we want to try to go for when finding these drawing combinations is that whenever we find ourselves losing or in hopeless positions, we should never give up. We should try to find ways in order to not lose here. So in this position, we are black and if we evaluate the material, black has one, two, three pawns, white has one pawn, and both sides have a queen, but unfortunately here, white does have this extra rook. So, we're, so they have a lot of material and the threats for white are very scary. They have either queen to g4 checkmate or queen to g6 followed up by queen takes h6 checkmate. So for black, we're going to need to find a way to avoid trying to lose here. So what black is going to try to do here is play this move queen to e1 check attacking the king. Now this king on h1 has only one square to go to, which is this g2 square. So as the king goes to g2, what we can do here as black is place our queen on d2 with a check. Now black is, excuse me, white has a choice to make. So they can't really go back to h1, otherwise there are there is this queen to h2 checkmate. And if the king tries to go to f1, then what we can do here as black is just simply repeat by checking with queen to d1 check. Let's say the king goes back to g2, we can play this move queen to d2 check again. Now, if the king goes to, if the king captures the pawn, then what we can do here as black is play this move queen to g2 check, giving up our queen, and after the uh, king takes, excuse me, wrong line. So after the king takes on g3, then there is this move queen to d6 check, and after the rook captures our queen, then it is stalemate because the black king has nowhere to go to. And this pawn on g5 is completely pinned, so it can't move because the queen would be attacking the king. So no squares to go to. So let's try to give some of these problems a try here. So we are black in this position. It's between Porsche versus Lengyel in 1964. Black to move. So we can see here that black is a bit of a deficit in this position. So both sides have the queen, but if we count the pawns, white has one, two, three pawns, and black has one pawn. 
So if white is able to achieve a position where they can trade off their queen and trade off a pawn, they'll be left with two passed pawns, which they can promote and try to win the game. What we can also notice here is that black, their king on h8 has no squares to go to because of the fact that this queen on g6 is taking away the h7, g7, and g8 square. In addition, our pawn on d5 can't move at all because there's an opposing pawn in the way. So it looks like here that our only mobile piece is this queen on d7. So we need to find a way to maybe get rid of our mobile queen in order to achieve stalemate where we can't play where we can't move any of our pieces. So the move here in this position is this queen to g4 check, inviting white to capture our queen on g4. Because if so, after the king takes on g4, then it is stalemate. The black king has nowhere to go to and the black pawn can't move forward. Now, if white tries to avoid capturing the queen, let's say king to h6, saying that if you trade my queen, if you capture my queen, then I can take back and I should have an easy game with this, with this pass pawn running down the board. But in this case, if the king goes to h6, what we can do is simply slide our queen to h4 with a check, attacking the king, and white's only move is to play queen to h5, blocking the check. Now what we can do here as black is play queen to f6, check, and after white blocks, what we can do is just simply repeat the position three times and we can claim a draw. Now, let's say if the king tries to go to f6. Well, we're gonna follow the same pattern here. We're gonna try to give up our mobile queen by playing this move, queen to e6, check. And if white captures the queen, then it is stalemate. We have no squares to go to. And if the king simply just returns back where it came from, we can just repeat our move of queen to g4 check and we can successfully get a draw as if they repeat, we will repeat it until we've reached a position three times in a row. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at this position between pause Mike and an unknown player in 1995 and we are white here in this position, white to move. So white is at a bit of a deficit in this position due to black's threats and material. Black is up one whole rook, the h1 rook, while we don't have a rook, though we do have a queen and a knight for their queen and bishop here. In addition here, we can also notice that this bishop on c6 and the queen on d5 are creating a battery. So they're controlling from the c6 to g2 diagonal. And with this battery in mind, black is threatening to capture on g2 and essentially get a very strong attack with ideas of if king to h4, maybe they could try moving their pawn or capturing h3. So we have to be really careful here as white. So in the last two positions, we saw that we can try to get stalemate where none of our pieces can move but I think we have a little bit too much here as white as we can move all of these pawns. We have the knight and queen. So we're gonna find another method in order to achieve a draw here. So that move is knight to f6 check. So with knight to f6 check, we are attacking the king and we are attacking the queen on d5, so a fork. And if the king ever moves away, that is a huge mistake as we can simply play queen to b8 check and we will have checkmate as the queen goes to d8, we will capture the queen, the bishop blocks the check, and then we can capture the bishop checkmate. So black cannot move their king, and if they try to move their king to g6, 
then what we can do is just simply scoop up the queen and the tables have turned a little bit here in which I think white has a much favorable position now as they have a queen in compensation for the bishop and rook here. So that leaves black with one real choice here, which is to capture the knight on f6. Well, if black captures the knight on f6, what we can do here as white is capture the f7 pawn with a check here, attacking the king. We couldn't capture the pawn on f7 earlier because there's this pawn on g7. So after knight f6, pawn takes f6, queen takes f7, checking the king, black's king can only go to one square, which is king to h8. And now after the king goes to h8, what white can do here is play the move queen to f8 check. And once black returns to their original square, then what we can do here is repeat the position by playing queen to f7 check. So we have essentially perpetual check, never ending checks, and the position will be a draw very soon. All right, how about we try this position, Tatenko versus Murel in 1961, and it is black to move here. So black is at a bit of a deficit as white has a whole rook against black. So black has three pawns, white also has three pawns, and both sides have a queen, but left over is this rook on e6. So it's very hard for black to create any progress here. Though you have a pass pawn, these two pieces for white, the rook on e6 and queen on c8, do a far and well enough job to try to easily attack black. So there are threats with queen takes a6 check, followed up with support of the rook maybe coming to c6 after the king goes to c3. Many dangerous things here. And we can't really try ideas like queen to d1 check because there are ideas where white can just play king to f2 and I think they might just be pretty much safe after let's say queen to d2 check, king to g3, white has play now. So what we have to do here as black is find a way to achieve a draw here. And what we can notice is that we have some pieces that cannot move at all. And that includes these three pawns here. There is something in the way for these pawns to try to move forward. The pawn on g4 is in the way, the king on d3 is in the way, and the pawn on a5 is in the way. In addition, our king on d3 can't move at all. Can't move to e4, e3, or e2 because of this rook on e6, and likewise with c2, c3, and c4 because of this queen on c8. So it seems to be here that our only real mobile piece here for black is our queen on d2. So we need to find a way to get rid of our queen in order to escape a loss here. So in the chat we have the move queen to c1 check, beautiful move, because if white captures our queen on c1, then we have achieved stalemate as the king has nowhere to go to. The queen covers c2, c3, c4, covers d2 and e3, alongside with this rook covering e4 and e2. So no squares for our king to go to, and our pawns can't move. And of course, if white tries to move the king, then white will actually be the one losing, as we can take their queen on c8, creating a skewer. So attacking the rook on e6 and also indirectly attacking this pawn on g4. So once the rook moves away, we can scoop up this pawn and we should have a very fine game here for black. All right, let's try this one. So this one's a pretty well-known drawing combination. We have Pilnik versus Rachewski in 1942 and it is white to move here. So it is very evident that white is in a bit of a pickle as they only have one pawn 
versus black's four pawns. So if black can try to trade off a pawn, they have three pass pawns that can promote into a queen and finish off the game. And both sides do have their queens here. So what could white try to do in order to not lose this position? Well, what we can notice here is that our king is on h1, so it's in the very corner. Whenever a piece is in the corner, it typically has not a lot of squares to go to. So the king would have three squares to go to, but g1 is currently covered because of this queen on e3. So we technically have two squares for our king to go to, so g2 and h2. And in addition, we have a very mobile queen on f8. It has a lot of directions that it can go to. So maybe we can try to coordinate a way where we can set up black's pieces in which we would have no legal moves. So what we can also notice here is that the king on a7 and the queen on e3 are on the same diagonal from a7 all the way to g1 here. So perfect. In the chat we have the move queen to f2, creating a skewer here. So we are attacking the queen, and in addition, we are indirectly attacking the king on a7. And this is also a pin because the queen can't move, otherwise the king would be in danger. So what black would have to do is capture the queen on f2, and after the black queen captures on f2, then white has no legal squares to go to, therefore stalemate. And if black tries to do anything else, let's say they try to escape the pin or try to push the pawn, then white would actually be winning in this position as they can capture the queen on e3 and essentially scoop up the pawns soon and bring the king into action. All right, we're looking good here. So white to move, we have Howard's versus Pavey in 1951. So as we evaluate this position, white has one, two, three, four. So looks like we do have a question regarding the last puzzle. Why couldn't the queen move to b3? Well, the queen can't move to b3 because there is this pen alongside this diagonal from f2 to a7. So black's best choice is just to capture the queen, but that would end in the stalemate. All right, back to this. So white has one, two, three, four pawns. Black has one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. So black is up two pawns, but it looks like we have a queen for their rook on a3. So it looks like we are up the exchange, up a lot of good material. But unfortunately, black does have a tactic against us, and it is this skewer along the third rank. So that means if we move our king, the queen will be lost, and we can't move our queen because there is this pin alongside this king on h3. The king would be under attack. And in addition, this rook on a3 is supported by this b4 pawn. So unfortunately for us, we can't do any measures of capturing the rook on a3 because black will just capture back and they'll soon just run down the board and promote. So it looks like we are in very big trouble here as white, but we can find a move that can let us escape inevitable lost here. So in the chat we have this wonderful move, king to h4. A very sly move because if black captures our queen on f3, which is probably the best move, then we have stalemate in this position. Our pawns cannot move because there is a piece in the way. And in addition, our king on h4 has nowhere to go to because the pawn on f5 is guarding g4, the pawn on g6 is guarding h5, and, our, and the rook on f3 is guarding g3 and h3. 
So we have no squares to go to, therefore stalemate. And if black tries to do anything else, let's say pushing the pawn to b3, then I think white can just deliver a check with f4. Maybe after the king moves away, we can play a move like queen to c1, essentially just trying to stop black promoting their pawn on the b file. Very nice. All right, how about we give this puzzle a go? So we have Gergen Dice versus Sweeten in 1961, and it is white to move here. So black, there are a lot of black pieces on the board here. So if we evaluate, white has two pawns, black has one, two, three, four, five pawns. So they are up three pawns. Both sides have a queen, and it looks like black has the better deal of the exchange for two pieces for a rook here. And we can also notice that we are in some big trouble here as white. They have a pawn on h2 ready to promote, but luckily for us we do have our king on h1 preventing the pawn from promoting, and they have two pass pawns alongside the a-file ready to promote. And there is this immediate queen to g1 checkmate idea here. So it looks like we can't really try to go for a win in this position. So what we want to try to do is essentially find a way to achieve a draw here. And what we can notice is that we have three non-mobile pieces. So our king on h1 can't move at all. This pawn on h2 is protected by the bishop and the queen on g5 is covering g2 and g1. So no squares for the king. And these two pawns, c4 and d5, cannot move because there are pieces in the way. So for the c pawn, this knight on c5, and for the d pawn, this bishop on d6. So it looks like here, our two mobile pieces are our queen and rook. So they have plenty, plenty of squares to go to. So what we need to do here as white is maybe find a way to get rid of our mobile pieces. But in which order is the correct way? And how could we force them to try to take our material? Otherwise, if given a chance, they will play queen to g1, checkmate. So what we're going to do here in this position is capture this pawn on h7 with a check. So forcing black to react, they have no squares to go to for their king besides capturing our rook. And once they capture our rook on h7, what we can do here as white is also give black our queen by playing queen to h8 check, forcing black to capture our queen on h8, and then we have successfully achieved stalemate as we have no squares to go to. And I would also like to comment another funny, cute move instead of queen to h8 is also this move, queen to g8, check. So essentially saying the same idea because if the king takes, then it's stalemate. But let's just say if black really wants to push for the win and sees that if we capture the queen, it would be stalemate. And if they try to play this move, king h6, then the tables have turned, queen to h8, checkmate. So black has all this material, but yet they lose. So a nice little addition to this puzzle here. All right, on to the next one. All right, so we are white in this position, and it looks like we are in a different stage of chess. We are in the middle game here. So a lot more pieces than the previous puzzles we have looked at, where we are in the end game, there are few pieces and fewer mobility around this position here. So white to move, we have Schwinner versus Delmi in 1924, and how could we achieve a draw here in this position as white? And the reason why white wants to achieve a draw is because of the fact that black has a lot of material. They do have a bit of a nuisance on d3, in which if we try to capture, we're gonna be left with some weaknesses. D3 
double isolated pawns, and they are easy to target and attack. And if we just count material, then both sides have a rook, both sides have a queen, both sides, both sides have a minor piece, but black does have this extra minor piece sitting on c8. And we could also count the pawns. White has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. And black has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns as well. So white is just playing out down a whole piece here. So what could we do here in the middle game to try to achieve a draw here? So perfect, in the chat we have the suggestion knight to g5. A very, very clean move, essentially saying, we're trying to checkmate you on h7. So if you're careless, let's say you try to take my pawn on c2, then what I will do is just capture the pawn on h7, checkmate, as it's supported by the knight on g5. So black does not want to do that. Let's say they just capture the knight on g5. Well, if they capture the knight on g5, we can just capture back on g5 with a check, forcing the king to run to the corner, h8, and what we can do is perform perpetual check, so never-ending checks. We can play queen to f6 check, and after the king goes to g8, then we can return to queen g5 check, and we will just repeat this position two more, two more times, and then we will achieve a draw. Now, we do have this a suggestion after pawn takes, king h8, queen to f6, king g8. Maybe there's this idea of rook to e4. But the problem with rook to e4 is that we do have a nice idea of playing rook to g4, threatening checkmate. But I believe here black may play something like pawn to e5, just uncovering this bishop to guard this g4 square, and we can't really perform checkmate here. And we can't really reroute our rook in time. Let's say if we try rook h4, maybe black will just offer a proposal of a trade with the queens, and we'll be losing here as white. And there's nothing else that black can do after knight to g5. They could possibly delay it, let's say pawn to h6, but we can just capture on h6. After they capture back, we can just move our queen alongside h5 and g5, performing perpetual check. And in addition, here, if black tries some sort of sneaky move, like bishop takes h2, we have to be really careful. We should not capture this bishop on h2, because if we do, they will simply take back and once we take back, they'll just be up a piece. So the correct move here would be a move like king to h1. And then they would have to take, and then we can perform, once again, our perpetual checks. And we do also have a suggestion after knight g5, what about rook to d8 here? Well, the problem with rook to d8 is that I think I can just capture on h7 here, after the king goes to f8, what I can do is maybe play queen to h8 check, king to d7, and I might have some ideas where I can maybe capture this pawn on e6, and if pawn takes, then there is perpetual here, I believe, and if bishop takes, maybe rook takes, if pawn takes, there's some sneaky ideas of perpetual, and if king takes, there might be some dangerous plans with rook to e1 check here. So if this, yeah, so after knight to g5, whoops, knight to g5, pawn takes, we can deliver perpetual here. And let me just turn on the engine and see what they say after rook d8. Huh, 
it looks like black is still a little bit better here. So a move like knight e4, hmm, interesting. But that's essentially the try and gist for knight to g5 here. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So we have an endgame, we have black to move, we have Nikolaeski versus Taimanov in 1966, and it is black to move, and we want to try to get a draw here. So the reason why we want to get a draw is because of the placements of the opponent of the kings here. So white's king is very active. They are ready to go behind our pawns and essentially try to capture them. And our pawns are kind of stuck here. We can't make any real advancements because there's just pawns in the way here. So what should we try to do here as black? Yeah, so essentially in the last puzzle, it's a bit unclear. After rook d8, there might be some ideas where black may be able to hold. So what could black do here in this position? So we have this idea in chat where we can try to stalemate ourselves on a5. So we want to try to get to this a5 square. So let's try king b6. Well, if king to b6, looks like I can just play king to d6, kind of putting you in a little bit of a zug swing because if you move your king, then the pawn falls. But luckily for us, we have this move king to a5 essentially saying, you can have my pawn on c5, but if you capture it, it will be stalemate as we have no squares to go to. Our pawns can't move as there's pieces in the way, and our king on a5 can't move at all. So can't go to b6 because of the c5 king, can't go to b5 because of the king and pawn, and it can't go to a4 because of this b3 pawn. So no squares to go to, and no matter how hard white tries here, we can just dance our king to b6 and a5. So for example, let's say king to a5, let's say they hold on a little bit, they play the move king to d5, we can just play king b6 and essentially try to aim for a repeating position. And in addition, after king of a5, if the king tries to go to c6 or c7, it's essentially stalemate as well, with black having no pieces that can move. All right, we are looking good. How about we give this one a try? So we have white to move. We have Matlovic versus Bonovic in 1970, and it is white to move here. Now, white wants to try to achieve a draw here because of the fact that they are down a pawn. So white has two pawns, black has three pawns, and both sides have their queen, and the coordination of their pieces. So their king is on the very first rank, has almost no squares to go to, and in the end game, the king is really important, and you should try to activate the king as much as you can. And in addition, yeah, so can't move any of our pawns. King has no squares to go to. So it's best for white to try to achieve a draw as black will try to find a way to scoop up these pawns and essentially create a new queen. So what we can do here as white, perfect. We have this move queen to d3 check. So we are attacking the queen on d6, and we are attacking the king at f3 at the same time. So we're creating a fork. So if the black king tries to move, then that just is a bad move for black, as we can capture the queen, and then we'll be the ones scooping up the pawns and winning the game. And if the black queen tries to capture our queen, then what we've successfully done here is created stalemate as white has no, no pieces that can move. The pawns have something in the way, 
of them from moving and our king on e1 has no squares to go to as the queen on d3 covers d2 and d1 and also covers f1 and e2 and the king on f3 covering the f2 square. So we've turned this losing position into a draw here. All right, we are looking good. All right, we have black to move. We have Delling versus Schultz in 1982 here, and it is black to move. So it looks a little bit more complicated as we have a few more mobile pieces than we would have here. So through evaluating here, black has two pawns and a queen, and black has three pawns and a queen and rook. So it looks like white is up a whole rook and pawn. So they're looking good material-wise, and there are some very scary threats that white has on black. Essentially this rook coming to h8 checkmate. So black needs to basically find a way out of this losing position and find a way to achieve a draw so they don't lose. So what could we do here as black? So we have the suggestion of putting our queen to h1 check. So we are voluntarily giving up our mobile pieces. So our mobile pieces here are a pawn on g3, as it can capture the pawn on f2, and our queen with its many squares that it can go to. So we gotta get rid of these two pieces. And by doing that, we will play queen to h1 check after the king takes. What we can do here as black is invite them to capture our pawn. Because if they capture our pawn, then we successfully achieve stalemate because our king has nowhere to go to because of the fact that the queen and rook are taking away the squares of the king and the queen is preventing this pawn on f7 from moving. Now if black tries, excuse me, if white tries to play king g1, still stalemate, and if they try to move out the way, what we can do is promote after the king moves, then we can just place our queen right in front of the king, forcing white to capture, and as they capture, either with the pawn or with the king, then we've successfully achieved stalemate here. So what if black tries to, excuse me, if white tries to just capture the g3 pawn? So simply ignoring the queen and trying to find a checkmate here with rook to h8. Well, what we can do here is offer our queen up. So queen to g2 check. If the white king takes, then it is stalemate. If the king moves to h4, then we can just simply place our queen right in front of the qu king, queen to g4 check, and after the king takes, then it is stalemate. And if the king tries to run away to f4, what we can try here is a move like queen to f3 check if king takes stalemate. If the king goes to g5, we can force the queen to go to g4. And once they capture back, it is stalemate. And if, black, if white continues to ignore, then we can just play queen to d5 check. Just keep offering our queen and of course, if white tries to avoid capturing the queen, we can just repeat the position and then we can still achieve our drawing idea here. All right, so that was a bit of a long one, but I think we got a good gist of how we can, well, the pattern of finding stalemate is giving up a lot of our mobile pieces. All right, how about we try this puzzle here, black to move. We have Ref Shelger versus Sapir in 1983. And there we are in the endgame stage, and there are a lot of pieces here. So if we evaluate, black has one, two, three, four, five pawns. 
White also has five pawns as well. Both sides have a queen, both sides have a rook, but for white, they have this extra knight on f5. So we are at a deficit material-wise, and we are pretty much losing this position because of threats where white could just simply simplify the material, get rid of all our firepower, and there's threats where white could capture the d6 pawn with either the queen or knight, and in addition, they could try to activate their rook and come to b7 and try to achieve some sort of initiative here. So what could we do here as black to basically avoid ourselves from losing? Okay. So black can play this move rook to c1 check. So with rook to c1 check, after the rook captures our rook, instead of capturing back on c1, what we can do is actually capture this queen on b8 because of the fact that the rook on b1 is no longer there protecting the queen on b8. So for example, if white were to move and then we were to capture the queen, their rook would be there to capture back. So it looks like white can't capture the rook, but what happens if they, let's say, do move away to king to g2? Well, what we can do here is play this move queen to c2 check. And basically the idea is that we are offering, we are attacking the king and soon we'll be offering a way to give up our pieces in order to achieve stalemate. So we have a question, do we have any winning chances after queen takes b8, though that looks like unpleasant almost? Well, after queen takes b8, I think for the most part, we aren't necessarily winning, because I believe white can at most just bring their rook to f1 and kind of just dance around along f2. So for example, let's just say I do this, check, king there, and if I try to do some sort of breakthrough, then white could just dance around with their pieces. And there isn't really too many ways for white to try to win here, as our queen has a lot of squares to go to and try to get some sort of way to perpetual check. But the idea here is that after the king goes to g2, queen to c2 check, after king to g3, what we can play is this move, rook to g1 check. So if the rook captures our rook, we can now offer our queen up by playing queen to h2 check, forcing white to capture our queen, and then we've successfully achieved stalemate as there are no squares for our king to go to. This pawn on h5 is covering the g6 square, the knight on f5 is covering the g7 square, and the queen on b8 is covering g8 and h8 squares for our king. And of course, white doesn't want to move their king away from check, otherwise there is sneaky little checkmate with queen to g2 here. And same thing with king to h3. What we can try to do here is play rook to h1. If they capture, then we could play queen to g2, forcing white to capture us. Then we would achieve stalemate. And if they can't move to g3, otherwise there is queen to h2 checkmate. And it's also a good thing to point out that we don't really have any ideas of capturing this rook on b1 with either our rook or queen because of the fact that their knight and queen will deliver checkmate. So for example, if we try to play rook takes b1, then we have this move queen to a7 check, attacking the king on h7, forcing the king to go to g8 or uh, h8 or g8, then we can deliver as white checkmate on 
g7. So that is the solution to this drawing combination here. So now what I have for you guys is some pretty cool facts regarding stalemates and draws here. So the first thing I have is the shortest known stalemate composed by Sam Lloyd, who is a chess player, chess composer, puzzle author, and a recreational mathematician. And at the very start of the game, where all the pieces are set up, lots of moves, you can achieve stalemate in 10 moves. So a pretty cool thing to uh, look at, but I don't suggest we try this at home. So in 10 moves, we can achieve stalemate. So white opens up the game with e3, pawn to a5, queen to h5. So we're breaking opening principles. Rook to a6, queen takes a5, pawn to h5, queen takes c7, rook a to h6, pawn to h4, pawn to f7, uh, excuse me, pawn to f6, queen takes d7 check, king to f7, queen takes b7, queen to d3, queen takes b8, queen to h7, queen takes c8, and after king to g6, white can deliver stalemate with the move queen to e6 as all of these pieces of black are pretty much trapped. They can't move anywhere. This pawn on f6 is pinned, can't move. Otherwise, the queen would be attacking the king. And we have our queen covering f7, f5, and our pawn on h4 covering the g5. Square. So this is the shortest known stalemate in 10 moves. Well, there is more to that. We have the shortest stalemate with all the pieces, so no captures. And this time it is in 12 moves, and it is composed by Charles H. Wheeler. So white opens up with pawn to d4, pawn to d6, queen to d2, Pawn to e5, a4, e4, queen to f4, pawn to f5, h3, bishop to e7, queen to h2, bishop to e6, rook to a3, pawn to c5, rook to g3. So basically enclosing white's queen here. Queen to a5 check, knight to d2, so self-pinning. Bishop to h4, pawn to f3, so another self-pin. Bishop to b3, we have pawn to d5, e3, c4. And the final move to achieve stalemate is this move, pawn to f4. And white has no legal moves at all. Knight can't move because of this pin. Rook can't move because of this pin. And all our other pieces can't move because there is another piece in the way from allowing us to move. So pretty cool facts here, and there is one more pretty nice stalemate. We can achieve double stalemate, and this time it is in 18 moves. And it is composed or discovered by Enzo Minbira. So pawn to c4, pawn to d5, Queen to b3, we have bishop to h3, g takes h3, pawn to f5, queen takes b7, king to f7, queen takes a7, king to g6, pawn to f3, pawn to c5, queen takes e7, rook takes a2, king f2, rook takes b2, queen takes g7, check, king to h5, Queen takes g8, rook takes b1, rook takes b1, king to h4, queen takes h8, pawn to h5, queen to h6, bishop takes h6, rook takes b8, bishop to e3 check, d takes e3, queen takes b8, king to g2, queen to f4, e takes f4, pawn to d4, and then we have this move, 
bishop to e3, and after black captures on e3, we have essentially uh, we essentially have double stalemate. As in this case, it is white to move. White has absolutely no squares or no pieces to move, so these pawns can't move. The the bishop, knight, and rook can't move because there's pieces in the way, and our king has no squares to go to as the pawn on e3 covers f2, and the king on h4 covers g3. Now, if it were black to move, then they would be in stalemate as well because they can't move any of their pawns because there's pieces in the way. And in addition, their king can't move because white covers these squares. Pawn on h2, pawn on f3 or h3, and the pawn on f4. So double check mate. So some pretty cool facts uh, knowing the shortest unique possible stalemates and essentially the idea with drawing combinations is that we should never give up though we are in losing or hopeless positions we should try to find ways in order to create stalemates perpetuals or achieve a way to get a draw rather than losing so that is beginner's breakdown my name is national master ralph tan and i thank you for your time